You're on. Great. Hello, we're back. This is Tony again from Lexington, Kentucky. And this is part two of cycling the A1A from the Georgia Florida line to Key West. Uh, part one, we talked about what to take. Um, part two, uh, we're going to go through the stages, the first five stages. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about those. Uh, maybe give you a little bit of an indication as to how you can um, gauge a trip yourself. So what we did was we have family in the Jacksonville area. So we had a family member drive us up to Fernandina Beach, which is about as far north as you can go on the coast on the A1A, Fernandina Beach, over the ferry. And we went, we rode that day, the first day from Fernandina Beach to St. Augustine. That was 61 miles. Uh, the notes that I've got says that uh, we averaged about 16 miles an hour. Our max speed was 28.6 miles, and uh, there was a lot of sweating, and uh, we had cramps actually on that first day. Now, we worked through those after two or three days, but it was rough going in the very beginning. That's all because of sweat. You're going to sweat a lot. You're going to need to drink more than you think you need to. Um, there are plenty of gas stations on the A1A and little stores. Load up every time you pass one and you think you're going to need it. And what we usually did was get free ice if we bought Gatorade from the store or something like that. And then we'd mix it with water. And, um, but we did that all the way down. Um, so again, day one, Fernandina Beach to St. Augustine, 61 miles. Day two, we went from St. Augustine to Daytona Beach. Now, I forgot to mention in St. Augustine there are plenty of hotels, both in the historic area and in uh, St. Augustine Beach, which is not quite as pretty, but it's still uh, uh, close to where you're going to need to be. The A1A cuts right through it. Um, plenty of places to stay. We stayed with a friend uh, in St. Augustine, and on our day two trip, we went from St. Augustine to Daytona Beach. That was 55 miles. Uh, total time uh, to this point is now 7 hours and 30 minutes biking and our average was about 15.5 miles per hour. Now, um, we stopped once, about once an hour to fill up on, uh, on bottles. So on the three or four hour trip, we're filling up two or three times. And um, that's, that's, again, more than you think you're going to need, but you're going to sweat that all out. Okay, so stage two, again, St. Augustine to Daytona Beach. Stage three, we went from Daytona Beach to Cocoa Beach and that was 73 miles. Okay. Now, uh, my dad actually got a wreck, uh, or wrecked on this section, um, and I got a flat. Uh, so, uh, needless to say, we, we had a couple, a couple little dust-ups there. Um, what I've got in my notes here is to take Indian Hill Drive to the Merritt Causeway. Okay. Uh, for whatever reason, I have that written down. Um, there are numerous 10-mile stretches on this route that don't have anything. So load up when you can with what you need, snacks, drinks, whatever. The, um, uh, let's see, across the Merritt Causeway, um, which was bicycle friendly. Okay, the Merritt Causeway is bicycle friendly. It's got signs and a, and a lane, okay? Um, most of the A1A is bicycle friendly, and the parts that are not, the, the parts of the road that are not bicycle friendly, there are usually some there's usually some kind of lane, um, like a big sidewalk somewhere, oftentimes not used by pedestrians. So, um, again, you've got a lot of protection down there. Um, day four, or stage four, it's Cocoa Beach to Fort Pierce, 71 miles. We averaged almost 15. And uh, I've got down here lots of big houses, lots of protected lanes that are in good shape. You get a couple desolate spots, but nothing major. I've also got down here that the best advice is to cross both causeways as there are a few small hotels close together after the Coast Guard station on the inlet side, but there's not a lot before that. So go ahead and cross the two causeways to get over past the Coast Guard station. Okay. Day five, Fort Pierce to Juneau Beach. 50 mile ride. Total time now is about 21 hours. So we're looking at a total ride time of 21 hours over the last five days. Uh, there are some very nice areas here between Fort Pierce and Hobie Sound. Very smooth riding. What we probably should have done was taken the 708 over to Jupiter Island. We did not do that. We stayed on the US-1 side and it was a little hairy, almost kind of like a highway. 
Um, now, worst comes to worst, you just take it and deal with it, but uh, the Jupiter Island side probably would have been much nicer. Um, the uh, one thing about the, the, the Highway 1 is it can oftentimes be rough, uh, meaning the actual lane itself can be rough, the road can be rough. Uh, we stayed at a Holiday Inn Express at the Juno Beach at the corner of Donald, Ross, and the A1A. Okay. So, the first five stages, you've got a total of 310 miles, and we're averaging about 15 miles. Some of you all are going to move much faster than that, but uh, you do have to be aware that the wind can be counterproductive. Oftentimes it's a, it's a crosswind blowing in from the ocean or out to the ocean. And it can, um, it's not that it slows you down, but it doesn't speed you up. It's just kind of a, a burden. Um, but nevertheless, um, you will find different stages in there that are easy and some that are a little rough. Uh, but all in all, up through stage five, up, uh, up to Juneau Beach, um, we've had a, a, a reasonably easy trip. And um, in the next segment, I will talk about day, uh, stages six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, thanks a bunch. Bye-bye.